My name is John Lobel, and these are very brief descriptions of cruise ship lectures. And these lectures I'm going to describe now are four lectures on Venice, the city of Venice, the architecture of Venice, Venetian painting, and Venice in romantic movies. So this is very, very brief descriptions. If you click down below on the home page of this website, you'll find the entire lectures. So, the city of Venice. Imagination and beauty in art, literature, movies. And we'll begin with the geography of Venice, the protected lagoon, and how the Venetians ended up living on <laughs> islands in a swamp, uh, how that came about. And then we'll see how the canals are set up and the various areas of the city are set up and how a campi works. A campi is one of the sort of islands and it'll have a, a church and several other key buildings, a public square, etc. And the key palazzo will face outward because they want to be on the canal because this is trade, industry. And you want to be able to get ships right up to the docks at the uh, palazzos. The Venetians became good at dealing with the sea. They traded in salt to build their wealth, and they became able to eventually build uh, military capability. They learned how to build with piles, thousands of piles for a single building to build in this literally swamp. And then we'll see how a palazzo works, how the freight gondolas pull up and then load right into the ground floor of the building. They built great warships and then dominated the Adriatic. <clears throat> Here's the extent of their empire. They were always faced off against the Ottoman Empire. Later, we see on the right a European ship designed for the Atlantic, the Venetians designed ships to handle the calmer Adriatic and Mediterranean, but when the world shifted to the Atlantic, they were not able to compete and went into decline, and the rest of Europe entered the age of exploration. The Venetians had bad encounters with the Turks, and then Napoleon ended the Venetian Republic, and Venice became part of the Austrian Empire. We'll look at Venetian art, architecture, and music, and then Venice today, which is unfortunately has to think about flooding. We'll describe Project Moses to attempt to protect the city, the cultural activities in Venice today, and then the literally millions of tourists that visit every year. So you can see my full lecture on Venice the City on this site. Now a lecture on the architecture of Venice. And I begin by looking at European architecture, not Venetian but European, to pin down the basic styles. Byzantine, Romanesque, Gothic, Early Renaissance, High Renaissance, Mannerism, and Baroque. And then when we look at Venice at the palazzos, we see, oh, there's a Romanesque palazzo, a Gothic palazzo, a Renaissance palazzo. Of course, these are all just applied styles on the facade. Inside, behind that facade, they're all pretty similar. And then St. Mark's Basilica is Byzantine, and we see on the left Hagia Sophia, and on the right the interior of San Marco, a Romanesque church, a Gothic church, but only superficially. I don't have the fine buttresses. They're not built with Gothic structure. A Renaissance church, and then Andrea Palladio's San Giorgio Maggiore, a Manners church playing games with these superimposed Greek temple fronts, Baroque. And then we look at Andrea Palladio, and what happens is, with the decline of Venice as a sea power, the wealthy merchants move 
inland a bit and they become an agricultural power. Andrea Palladio builds their villas. And Palladio, an important Venetian architect, becomes the most influential architect in history. And we see in the upper left in England, in the upper right, Thomas Jefferson, uh, lower left, George Washington, lower right, National Gallery in Washington, D.C., all influenced by Palladio. So you can see my full lecture on Venetian architecture on this website. Venetian painting. As I do with the architecture, first I look at European painting in general. So we begin with medieval and Cimabue, then early Renaissance, Fra Angelico and Annunciation, the high Renaissance, Michelangelo from the Sistine Chapel ceiling, mannerism, the Madonna of the Long Neck, Baroque, Ecstasy of San Teresa, Rococo, the Swing. Then we turn to Venice and we see it playing out this sequence of styles. The early Renaissance in Giorgione's The Tempest, high Renaissance in Titian's art. Titian was a parallel to Michelangelo, much more erotically sensuous. Mannerism in Tintoretto, Baroque in Tiepolo. This allegory on the right here, there's a, it's a mural, but there's a sketch of it in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And then Canaletto, the artist of Venice, painting these great Venetian scenes. And then Piranesi, who's born in Venice, goes to Rome, produces these views of Rome and the Roman ruins, but then returns to Venice to do his famous series of etchings, the prisons. So you can see the, my full lecture on Venetian painting on, by clicking below on this website and on YouTube. I do a lecture on Venice in romantic movies. We look at several movies. Casanova giving us exuberance. So Casanova goes from woman's bedroom to woman's bedroom, escaping across the roofs, and a co-star of the movie is the city of Venice with these beautiful aerial shots. And after all kinds of adventures, he and his love escape on the, their companion merchant's ship. Dangerous beauty about Veronica Franco, Venice's most famous courtesan. Her mother has too many daughters, not enough dowry, and she tells Veronica, you're going to have to become a courtesan. She says, one of those? I'd rather go to the convent. Well, she goes to the convent and she says, uh-oh, <laughs> I don't think I want that choice. But her mother says, no, not a common prostitute. You're going to be a high-class courtesan. And for example, you're allowed to read books, which other women are not. So she can go to the libraries and read the great books. So she studies to be a courtesan, and she's a real hit with the men. And she's really compassionate about her clients. And Venice is in need of an alliance with the king of France. She takes care of him. He says, okay, you'll get your ships. And uh, for an important battle coming up, the plague comes. They blame the courtesans, who are then in prison. And she's brought to trial. All the men stand up and say, if she's a witch, I'm a witch. So she gets acquitted. The age of courtesans had ended, but she continues her love affair with Marco. Death in Venice, based on a book by Thomas Mann. A character based on Thomas Mann himself, in this case a composer, is going to Venice. And the city's a little bit dreary, not as beautifully illuminated as in other movies. And because he's this is going to be a dreary movie. And here he is, Venice! He's got his face buried in a book. And uh, at dinner, he spots a young man, Tadzio. There's an interesting young man. He's smitten with him, pursues him, not erotically, but just to admire him. And he, um, the plague hits, he gets the plague. He dies on the beach looking at this young boy looking like a Greek sculpture. 
Summertime with Catherine Hepburn and Rosano Brasi opening A Train Coming to Venice. Venice is a place where you separate from ordinary reality to go to a special place. But she's protecting herself from fully engaging in it by always having a camera jammed in her face. She's telling herself she's recording her little adventure, but and she's also protecting herself from fully experiencing her life. She has a, a beautiful little room at a pension and goes to St. Mark's Square. And let's try to get the exact same table she got. Anyway, there is uh, Brasi saying, hmm, there's an interesting woman tourist. And uh, he pursues her, and they have their night of romance, which is indicated with a shoe and fireworks. And then he says, you will, of course, stay and pursue a relationship with me. And she says, no, I just came for a fling, and now I'm going home taking her train back to reality. And then a little romance, a beautiful little movie starring um, with these two young people and older Laurence Olivier. So we have a young man who's really bright. He's a genius. He uses it to handicap the horses. He meets a girl, bumps into her, spills her books, picking them up. You're reading Heidegger? Well, she's bright too. And they hit it off, and they meet this older con man, and he tells them about the Bridge of Sighs. If you kiss under the Bridge of Sighs, you will be in love forever. She's fascinated. He's bored out of his gourd. She's starting to awaken. Here she is with her girlfriend at the museum. Hmm. And so they run off together to kiss under the Bridge of Sighs. They need an adult. And so uh, Laurence Olivier, the con man, helps them. And they finally commandeer a gondola and kiss under the Bridge of Sighs. They will be in love forever. Now, here's the fun part. In real life, Casanova is a real person. And he was friends with Voltaire, Goethe, Mozart. Very interesting person. Death in Venice. Tadzio is a real boy. Thomas Mann, with his wife, went to Venice. He spotted this young man. He was inspired to write the novel. Years later, the grown-up real Tadzio sees the movie, and he says, Oh, my God, that's me! Victoria Franco was a real person and a poet. Her poetry was powerful, heartfelt, explicit demanding of love and loyalty and defending against attacks. And there really is a bridge of sighs. And so let's all try to kiss under the bridge of sighs while we visit Venice. You can see this full lecture on these five movies on this website and on YouTube.